Now this might make me the most hated man on the internet, but Christmas starts the day after Halloween. Thanksgiving? Garbage holiday. It has food, it has family, but guess what? Christmas has that too. I guess the Thanksgiving aesthetic is orange, but uh, Halloween also has that. Smack dab in the middle of two holidays that does everything it does but better. Christmas starts the day after Halloween. This is non-negotiable. The day after Halloween also happens to be Gibby Day, which is why I'm making this video. If you're new around here, you may not know that November 1st, 2018 was the first time I uploaded a Chris Chan video to my channel. I had been making YouTube videos since April of 2014 and had amassed a whopping total of 20 subscribers. But November 1st, 2018 was the day that that all changed. On that day, I recorded glorious audio on my phone with the only visual being a two-second looping gif of C-3PO dancing, and that video got me everything I have today. She currently is under the impression that our world, or our entire universe, our dimension, will be crossing over with the fictional dimension that Quickville resides in. I discovered our good pal Chris Chan in the summer of 2018. My friend recommended that I read Tales Gets Trolled, and I loved it. But then towards the end, Asanachu appeared, and I had no idea what Asanachu was. What the fuck is a Sonic? Chew. So I googled Sonichu and got very confused. For the next few weeks, I absorbed all of the Chris information there was on YouTube, and at that time there actually was not very much. Gino had made about 10 episodes of his documentary. These were the original 10 episodes. He later took these down and remade them after a very long break. So I got really into Chris, and then I moved on to other oddities. Basically, I just binged down the rabbit hole. I didn't think about Chris again for months until he appeared on my Twitter feed. Keep in mind that most people who cover Chris, especially at that time, ended their coverage at about 2011. Maybe they would mention the Tom Girl stuff. So imagine my surprise when I click on his profile and see things about Goddess CPU Blue Heart Dimension 1218 and the oncoming Dimensional Merge. I was very lost, and I spent a couple days reading the quickie and trying to find out uh, what I had missed from the ending of most people's coverage of Chris until modern day. On Halloween of that year, I hung out with one of my friends who was very literate in internet culture, and we talked about Chris Chan. I told him about this rabbit hole of stuff I'd gone down, like how Chris absorbed part of his Sega Dreamcast into his body to gain its magical powers. And of course, we talked about Magichan and uh, how Chris was in love with fictional characters. The next day, which was today, November 1st, I had more to say, but my friend wasn't available, so I ranted into a microphone and uploaded the audio to YouTube. And people liked it, for, for some reason. At the time, I said I wouldn't be shifting my focus to Chris Chan content because I was really focused on video essays I wanted to write. I wasn't interested in lol cows. I decided to compromise, and I wrote video essays about Chris Chan. I made my content specifically for people like me, who had seen Gino's videos and were interested in Chris, but wanted to see the gap between where those coverages ended and the modern day. This meant that I had to understand what was currently happening with Chris and be able to translate it for my viewers. I also wanted to take advantage of this newfound attention to drive views to the content that I wanted to make, the video essays. I made my first Real Absurds video on Spirit, thinking that another heavy lore individual might attract the same audience as Chris Chan. That didn't really work. So going forward, I made two types of videos. I made my Chris Chan weekly updates to tell people about Chris and translate what he was saying to people who were really only following him on the surface level, and then I made my longer, absurd videos that no one watched. The Chris weekly updates usually took about three hours to make and would get about 30,000 views. The episodes of The Absurds would take somewhere between 40 to 100 hours to make and get 1,000 views. Thankfully, in the summer of 2020, I was able to merge these two ideas together into my Sonichu series. After that, I made similar videos about Chris Chan's prose. That's when I made what I think is my highest quality video, which is my one about the origin of Bionic the Hedgehog. Last December, I made an Absurds video about Bunny the Talking Dog, and I knew that I wanted my next Absurds to be about Merlogic, the Wonder Bread guy. Every time I saw a topic of him pop up, it annoyed me a little bit that people fundamentally misunderstood him, so I started working on a video about him. At the same time, I decided to remake my Absurds video about Chris. 
I figured that having a shorter video about Merlogic and a longer project about Chris Chan would mean that I would never get bored when I was editing, because I could always switch between the shorter project and the longer project, and all the while I would be making my weekly series. This didn't turn out how I expected. When I was basically done making my Merlogic video, I actually reached out to him, which is something I like to do with most of the subjects on my series. And not only did Merlogic respond, but over the course of several days, he typed out his entire life story to me, which gave me new context and new stories to tell for the video. That made me realize that the scope of the project had changed. So now I had two massive projects in development. For the first half of this year, I really only made Chris weekly updates because of these two monstrosities I had burning in the background. But finally, I finished Chris Chan's video, and I started to wrap up Merlogic's. I also moved around this time, which is why I'm not standing in my living room with the Hogwarts castle behind me on the mantel place. Uh, I'm in my kitchen, and if we zoom out a bit, uh, you can kind of see there's like some chests over there, and there's a hutch, and you can see some Legos. Also, my voice is probably echoing a lot more. I wanted to set up a new studio with nice lighting and a green screen, and then the day after my internet was finally installed, uh, Chris Chan abused his mother. I think a lot of stories I tell from this time in my life will include the transition and then Chris Chan slept with his mom. So I recorded what I knew would become my new most watched video, with very poor lighting, no echo dampening, and a bland background, because I wasn't set up for the biggest quick news of all time to drop. After those first few days where updates rolled in every hour, I finally got a break and finished up my Merlogic video. I felt like I was free from these beasts that together had taken me eight months to make, but I also now didn't have weekly updates about Chris to make anymore. And now his hearing has been pushed off to later this month, so really there's not much going on with him. I've always made historical content about Chris, but that's never really been my main focus. I'm really only interested in his religion and his philosophy. So I will look at his past to see how that's influencing his present, but my Chris content has mostly been about his present ongoing antics, and those have obviously dried up. For the first time in 11 months, I'm free to do whatever I want. Suddenly the 30 things on my backlog can actually be made. Long, daunting tasks like making a series about Tails Gets Trolled and Taylor Swift, which is now something I'm mentioning for the third year in a row in one of these anniversary videos, uh, which means it's definitely not going to happen this year, are now possible. Not only that, but other things, like short videos that I've been making for Jax Film's video context can actually get the attention that they deserve, instead of them being squished between my recordings of Chris videos on my days off. The music you hear in the background is actually taken from a Jax Film's video called Royalty Free Christmas Songs. One of my favorite holiday traditions is when he releases new videos in that series, which is sad talked about this occasionally, but because this is really a video about me and this channel, I figure this is a great time to talk about it. Uh, one of the reasons that I love Jack's film so much, besides the high quality of his content and editing, is the uniformity of when his content comes out. It becomes like a tradition or an event. It's something I can always look forward to. For the first year or so of his Yai series, he actually made a video every day, where each new video would respond to the previous video that he had made. And when I was in college and when that series was coming out, that was something that I could always look forward to sitting down and watching every single evening. That didn't last very long, but still, it was something that endeared me to him in the beginning. So even if now he only does this with yearly things, like his yearly tradition of the royalty-free Christmas songs, that still gives me a reason to sit down and enjoy his videos like they're the only thing in the world and I don't need to worry about other stuff that's going on. And so I really appreciate him for that. And it's been amazing to me to hear that I've been like that for some of you. I've had so many amazing interactions with some of you guys on Twitter and in the YouTube comment section. It's really not something I ever saw myself doing. Basically, this channel exists because I got bored during my latter years of college and then after I graduated and I wanted to keep writing essays. I have a degree in English and philosophy and that's just something I like doing and so I would take my essays and I would record them and make them videos with slideshow-like backgrounds and I never really intended on interacting with an audience, I just wanted to get this out here mostly for my own enjoyment. And now there's 50,000 of you and that's real cool. 
The most common thing that you guys ask me is if I'm going insane dealing with all the Chris Chan stuff. That's actually been a very common comment for <laughs> two years now since I've been doing this. Uh, and I really have to say that I'm fine. The truth is that it doesn't make me go crazy. I love the insanity of looking into this stuff. I love the deep lore, and I love unraveling the mysteries that are behind everything. It's no more disturbing to me than a true crime docuseries. The only negative impact it really has is that sometimes it affects my faith in humanity. Granted, Chris is not the only thing that does that. That'll just happen to you naturally if you spend a lot of time on Twitter. But it does make me look forward to covering more light-hearted topics. I'm still making a video about Spurt's book. I'm making a video about Sad World, which is a YouTube channel made by Noah Monk, the actor who played Gibby on iCarly. You got Tales Gets Trolled, you got Taylor Swift, and then you get whatever happens to interest me any given weekend when I have free time. Oh, New York Comic Con's coming up? You know what? I think I'm going to look up the history of that event because I really don't know. And then it turns out that the building that it's in was under the control of the Mafia. So, it's Christmas. Or at least I think it's Christmas because, you know, I'm not a plebeian. You lot have to sit through turkey dinner with your extended family and argue about politics, but I get to sit right here with my laptop and my candle and my Lego. And I get to enjoy all the traditions that I want, including the newest Jax Films videos. So I'm going to sit here, and I'm going to wait for him to upload his newest for this year and continue the tradition. I'm going to take my fake hot chocolate and sip it. And I'm going to put some of his songs on in the background, because they're royalty-free, so he can't copyright strike me. It's literally in the name. Thank you for three wonderful years, and I look forward to many more. Snowflakes, sleigh bells, manger. Yet more Christmas words I know. Jackson, camera, Jackson, sandal, asshole, cameras. Don't read the comments, get the bad for your grammar. We don't know your letters and the spelling of reactions. Hashtag, yeah, I let Jack find the answers. I invented product placement. Ooh, Fanta, that'll go well with the channel lasagna. Thanks for watching. What you're seeing on screen now is actually my new avatar for YouTube and Twitter. It's going to go into full effect tomorrow. It was drawn by Mel the Honeybee, who's drawn many things for my channel, and I cannot thank her enough. I'll be back to you with another video soon.